Hi, my name is Robert Veranek and in this video you are going to design a board in Cadence, Orcad and Allegro software. Even if you have never ever designed any board before, when you follow this tutorial step by step, then by the end of this video you will design this board and you will know how to use Orcad and Allegro for your own projects. In this tutorial you will learn how to draw schematic in ORCAD, you will learn how to create schematic symbols in schematic symbol library, so this will help you to create any symbol which you may ever need in your schematic, you will learn how to create paths and footprints for all the components what you may need in your PCB, and of course we are going to create the PCB in Cadence Allegro. So you will learn how to place the components on the board and how to connect them together. We are going to also generate all the documents which you need to manufacture this PCB. So for example, you will know how to generate the Gerber files. You will also know how to generate all the kind of different documentation. For example, assembly drawing, and also bomb bill of material which you will need when you will be building your board. So let's start. We are going to start ORCAD, click on start button, find cadence, capture sys, and select the license which you have, left click, OK. Click on file, new, project, I'm going to call it let u2 and uh, I'm going to save it here. Select folder, OK. I go inside of this DSN schematic. I'm going to rename schematic page, right click, rename. I'm going to call it let, OK. And I'm going to rename also this, right click, rename. And I'm going to call it let project. OK. Select library, click on file, new library. Right click on the new library, save as. Be sure you are going to save it inside of our project directory. And I'm going to call it let schematic lib, like this. Save. We are going to create our first schematic symbol. Go to Google, search for Digikey, and uh, our first symbol is going to be header 2.54 millimeter. Click here. We would like to use Molex. Here it is in stock. With 3D model, apply. And we need two positions, one row, board to cable wire, through hole, apply. Let's have a look what they have here. We can use this one. So click here. And this is what we are going to use. Copy the header description. Just left click here. Go back to our cut. And to create new component in your schematic symbol library, just right click on the library and use new part, left click. Uh, we are going to use the header description as the name, so right click, paste, and the part reference prefix for the for headers or for connectors is usually J. Press OK. When uh, you are creating a symbol, you can use these icons which are here or you can use this place menu. So click on place and I'm going to place some pins. So left click here. I'm going to name this pin as plus and this is going to be pin number one. So I'm going to use number one here. Press OK. Left click, left click, escape. Select pin number two and change the name to minus. Left click into empty space, click on place, select rectangle, left click, left click, escape, and make this uh, outline a little bit smaller. 
left click to select it, press left button, hold it down and move it. To zoom in, zoom out, uh, use control, so press control on your keyboard and then mouse wheel, zoom in, zoom out. I'm going to make it a little bit nicer, I'm going to move this value maybe like this and I'm going to move this J maybe like this. Select the value, just left click here and write 1x2 header, left click into empty space, go to digikey, copy the par number, left click, go back to our cut and uh, we are going to add this part number into part properties. So left click here, I'm going to call this new property like dot manufacture pn. Left click here, dot manufacture pn and uh, here we are going to place the part number. Left click, control v and left click here. This uh, manufacture part number property will be very useful when we will be creating bomb bill of material for our project. You will see later, okay? Left click into empty space to unselect everything and don't forget to save the library. When you have a look inside of our library, you will find there the symbol what we have just created, okay? So this is our header inside of our schematic symbol library. Next, we are going to create resistor, which we need for our schematic. So go to DigiKey. I'm going to use right click, open in new tab. We would like to search for a resistor. 360R0805, enter. Chip resistors. We would like to use this one, 1% in stock with 3D model, apply. And this is the resistor what we can use. Copy this resistor description, left click here, go to our cut, right click on the library, select new part, name is going to be the resistor description, right click, paste, and the prefix for resistors is R. Okay. In our library, we are going to have new symbol, resistor symbol, and we are going to draw this symbol. Go to place, select pin, change the name to one, number one, press OK, left click, left click, escape, zoom in, press Ctrl and mouse wheel, switch off snapping to grid, just left click on this button, place, line, and watch the position of my cursor. We would like to place the line somewhere in the middle between these snapping points. So the last uh, number will be always five, okay? So left click and watch now. Left click, do not move your mouse. Left click again, watch the numbers here, okay? Last number should be five. Left click, 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 escape, left click into empty space to unselect everything and don't forget to switch on the snapping to grid again, just left click here. We are going to hide the pin name, just uncheck this, and also pin number, uncheck this. I'm going to make this uh, outline a little bit smaller, left click to select it and move it, move the pin back, and move also this, and make it nicer, move this, and also this. Select value and put here 360 are 1%. Go to DigiKey, copy the part number, left click here, go back to Orca, and in part properties, click here, left click at dot 
manufacturer pn control v left click here the last component what we need for our schematic is an led go to the key right click open in new tab search for led 0603 enter LED indication we would like to use this one in stock with 3D model apply we would like to use green one apply and uh, perfect this is the LED what we can use copy the description left click here go back to our project right click on the library select new path right click paste i'm going to delete some of this text because it's too long maybe like this change the prefix to d okay we are going to place pins just left click here our name c as cathode number one press ok left click left click escape select pin number two change this to a as anode left click zoom out select this make it a little bit bigger move the pins left click into empty space switch off the snapping to grid zoom in draw or place line and again watch uh, the position of my cursor so i'm going to draw it maybe from here left click left click escape now use uh, this icon place polyline left click left click press shift hold it down left 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 click escape here in fill style select solid left click into empty space uh, we are going to draw the arrows so again use this polyline left click zoom in maybe somewhere here left click press shift hold it down left click left click left escape left click into empty space place line left click press shift and left click escape select this solid uh, select all arrow just draw this selection rectangle zoom out move it maybe like here ctrl c ctrl v and place it like here disable the pin name and check this uh, disable pin number and check this left click into canvas enable the snapping to grid again uh, we are going to place line left click here left click left click left click left click escape make this smaller move also this and make it nicer move this value and also this go to digikey copy the part number left click and you know what we are going to do we are going to create new properties left click here it's going to be called dot manufacture pn 
and paste here the LED part number. Left click. I'm going to change also this value, select it, and I'm going to put here red. I know this LED is green, but a little bit later I would like to show you how you can make some changes in your library in case, for example, you need to adjust these symbols or if you made uh, a mistake or something. Okay, so a little bit later we will correct this. Now, be sure everything is saved, okay? There, uh, if it's not saved, there is this star, so you can save this symbol. And also be sure the whole library is saved, so just select it and save it. We are ready to start drawing schematic, so double click on our schematic page, click on place, part, here select our library, and to place a symbol from our library into schematic, just double click on the symbol, okay? So first the connector, double click, and place it, escape, double click on the resistor, press R to rotate, and left click to place it, escape, double click on the LED, press R on your keyboard to rotate, and uh, left click to place it, escape. Maybe you notice these errors down here, for now just ignore them, okay? We have not created any footprints yet, later I will show you how to fix this. We are going to connect everything, go to place, wire, zoom in, press control and mouse wheel, left click, left click, left, left, left click, left click, left click, left click, left, left click, left, escape, place wire again, left click, left click, escape, place, we would like to place the power symbol, select this, we would like to use VCC bar, OK, left click, escape, double click, we would like to call it plus 3v3, OK, place ground symbol, we would like to use this one, OK, and left click, escape. When you hover cursor over a net, you will see its name. For example, this one is plus 3v3, this one is GND. When you hover cursor over this net, it's going to have a weird name. And to name your nets, you can go to place and use net alias. Left click. I'm going to call it diode1. OK, press R to rotate, and I'm going to place it on this net. Left click, escape. Now when I hover cursor over this net, it's going to be called diode 1. Perfect. We have our schematic, and next we are going to create footprints. Footprints are used in PCB, and to create footprints, first we need to create paths. Go to Start menu, find the uh, Cadence PCB Utilities, and to create paths, we need to use this uh, Path Stack Editor software. Left click. First, we are going to create path or pin for our true hole connector. Click on File, select New, click here, and be sure you are going to save this new path or new pin into our project directory. I'm going to call it true pin, save, here select true pin, ok. I'm going to change units to millimeters, be sure circle is selected and true pin is selected. Click on drill and here we need to put the hole size. Go to digikey, 
find datasheet of our header open it and uh, recommended hole size is 1.2 millimeter so that's what I'm going to put here 1.2 okay uh, there is no secondary drill uh, drill symbol I'm going to change this to circle 1.2 millimeter uh, we can leave drill offset default and we need to set these design layers basically here we are going to specify the size and shape of the path and in datasheet there are no recommendations for the path size uh, but this is what I normally use so if you like you can use you can use exactly same dimensions so left click here instead of circle I'm going to use oblong and the size what I'm going to use is 2 millimeter by 1.6 millimeter this is how the pad is going to look and we would like to have same pad on all the layers so right click copy right click paste right click paste go to mask layers here we are going to specify the opening in solder mask layer so solder mask layer is uh, usually the green color on your pcb and uh, you don't want to have the green color on the path so here we are going to specify the opening left click here the opening is going to have same shape it's going to be oblong as our path but it's going to be a little bit bigger so here i'm going to put 2.2 millimeter and 1.8 millimeter uh, we would like to have this opening also on the uh, bottom layer in the solder mask bottom so right click copy right click paste click on options uh, we are going to leave this default click on summary and this is very important don't use this save which is here you need to go to file and use this save okay left click here very important we are going to create path for our resistor click on file new i'm going to call it res pin here I'm going to select SMD pin, OK. Be sure we are using millimeters. We are going to create SMD pin and the uh, shape is going to be rectangle. Uh, there is no drilling. Click on design layers. And here we would like to put dimensions for our path. Go to DigiKey, find the resistor open datasheet and we would like to see if there is uh, some information about the recommended footprint and uh, it says here uh, recommended footprint uh, please refer to data sheet cheap resistors mounting I'm going to search for this uh, here it is and maybe here is some information ah here it is okay for 0805 resistor uh, the path size is going to be c d okay so it is going to be 0 0.9 by 1.2 millimeter let's go back left click here A rectangle width is going to be 0 0.9 and the height is going to be 1.2 millimeter okay so this is the recommended path size go to mask layers again we would like to make the opening uh, around the path so left click here rectangle make it a little bit bigger than the path size so 1.1 by 1.4 millimeter and also we would like to create this paste mask layer this is basically the layer where solder uh, paste is going to be placed okay and usually this paste mask uh, layer is exactly same as the path so left click here use rectangle and the width is going to be same as the path size so 0 0.9 and height is going to be 1.2 millimeter options we can leave this default summary and don't forget to save file save 
we also need to create the path for our LED and you know exactly how to do it. Click on File, New, I'm going to call it LED Pin, select SMD Pin, OK, Millimeters, Rectangle, SMD Pin. There is no drill, click on Design Layers, go to Datasheet, open it. The path size is 0.7 by 0.7. So left click here, rectangle width is going to be 0.7 by 0.7. Mask layer, so left click, make it a little bit bigger, 0.9 by 0.9. And we also need paste mask top, left click here. And a uh, little bit later, I would like to show you something. So instead of using exactly same size as path is, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Later, we will correct it, okay? So I'm going to use, let's say, 0 0.6 by 0 0.6. Oops, 6. Click on options. We can leave this default, summary, and file, save. There is one more thing what we would like to specify in this PathStack editor and it is the VIA which we will use in our PCB. So click on File, New. I'm going to call it our VIA. Here select VIA, OK. Be sure we are using millimeters. VIA's circle. Now left click on this drill tab and the hole inside of our via is going to be 0.3 mm. There is no secondary drilling. Uh, drill symbol is going to be circle 0.3 mm. Uh, drill offset leave this default. Design layers. Left click here. And uh, we are going to use circle and uh, size of the via is going to be 0.6 mm. Uh, we would like to use the uh, same uh, path on all the layers, so don't forget, right click, copy, right click, paste, right click, paste. Uh, when we click on the mask layers, we don't have to do anything here. We would like to mask the vias and there is no uh, solder on the vias, so leave this default, leave options default, click on summary, don't forget to save, file, save. In the next step, we are going to create the footprints. So click on this start button, find the Cadence PCB and start PCB editor. Uh, select the license which you have, I'm going to use this first one and press OK. This is super important. Before you start doing anything in this Allegro software, we would like to add the local path into user preferences. Uh, otherwise, this software may have problems to find, for example, the paths, the pins, what we have just created. So go to Setup, User Preferences, and in Paths, select Library. In Path Path, left click here, add new uh, directory, just put here a dot, move it up, so it is on the top of the list, dot is a local directory, ok, press ok, ok, and switch off and switch on the software again. When the software starts, go to file, new, we would like to use package symbol wizard selected. Click on browse. Be sure we are going to create the footprint in our project directory. I'm going to call it hdr1x2. Open. Everything is correct. Click on OK. Uh, we are going to start from this. This is very close to what we need. Click on next. Here just load the template, left click here, click on next. 
we would like to use mills and the prefix for header is j click on next number of pins is 2 pitch is going to be I'm going to open data sheet pitch is 100 mils the width is 230 mils and the length for two pin header is 200 mils so go back and this is going to be 100 mils width is going to be 230 and the length is going to be 200 mils next left click here we are going to find the path or pin which we created for this uh, footprint so just write true uh, leave there the star and press tab on your keyboard you should see it here left click ok click on next uh, origin will be pin 1 location I'm going to select this left click click on next origin means uh, 0 0 position in the footprint click on next finish this is the footprint which was automatically generated by the wizard and uh, we are going to make some small adjustments and as we work on the footprint and in the PCB I will explain what you see here and and I will help you to understand a little bit more how to work in Allegro because there are many ways okay how you can work in Allegro the simplest way is to use general edit left click down here and select general edit you need to use general edit if you use something else it may be hard for you to follow this tutorial because you may see different menus in in the options okay so use general edit right click into empty space quick utilities grid I'm going to change this non edge grid to 5 by 5 mils okay now I would like to place uh, this rectangle so use this command left click go to options here you will see what you can do with this uh, we would like to place it on package geometry and uh, seal screen top layer we would like to use uh, or we, we don't want to fill this rectangle and we are going to place it somewhere here I'm going to open data sheet and basically we are going to mark position of this and this is pin number one so it needs to be on the left side okay so zoom in and I'm going to left click here and uh, watch the position of my cursor I'm going to maybe uh, place it like here left click right click done now we would like to move this designator if you hover cursor over uh, an object then you will see some information for example you can see this is text and it is on seal screen top layer so we would like to move it just uh, use the move command left click here left click on this text and move it for example somewhere here okay left click into empty space to unselect it now we would like to move this designator which is on assembly top layer and this time uh, when we will be moving this we would like to uh, hold the text in the center so select this left click and uh, place it maybe like here left click left click into empty space to unselect it uh, right click done we would like to mark pin one position so I'm going to add text uh, pin num uh, number one on seal screen top layer uh, use this add text command left click we would like to place it on package geometry seal screen top we would like to use size 4 left click here and just write 1 right click done we would like to move it so use the move command left click and move it maybe like here right click done very quickly I'm going to explain how you can work with layers in Allegro click on visibility here you can switch off and switch on all the layers 
or you can enable and disable the most important layers. If you would like to work with all the layers, go on this uh, or click on this button, let's click. And for example, select stack up. Here you can see this is the top layer. So these are the paths on the top layer of our PCB. We can enable solder mask. You can see it is a little bit bigger than the path. When we go to geometry, package geometry, we can enable seal screen top. So this is usually the white color around the components. You can go inside of the components, reference designator, and you can also enable the reference designator on the top. Okay, so here you can uh, enable and disable all the kind of layers which you need. Uh, for uh, PCB manufacturing, we will need the mask layer, we will need the top and bottom layer, we will need the seal screen and also paste layer. You will see when we will be generating the manufacturing information. I'm going to enable all the layers again and we are going to continue. There is one more layer which I have not mentioned yet and we are going to use it. It is called assembly drawing layer. And on this layer, we are going to show the position of the components on our PCB and also pin one location. In this footprint, for example, this text is on assembly drawing layer. You can see assembly top. And here we would like to place a circle to mark this pin one location. So use this circle command, left click, we would like to place this circle on package geometry assembly top layer and left click, left click, right click, done. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can work with commands. So uh, you probably notice if you would like to do something in Allegro, you always may want to use a command. So if you would like to move this circle, we can make this move command active and then we can select this circle and move it. Now, you can very simply recognize if a command is active because when you use right click, you will see this uh, done, oops, and cancel commands here in this menu and also other commands related to the uh, command which is active. So if you use cancel, basically what will happen, all the changes what you did uh, during the command, they will be cancelled. I will make this move active again. I will move it and I will move it again. Now, when I use right click and do oops, right click, oops, it will just uh, go uh, back like undo, but the command is still active. Okay. And uh, when you finish uh, with your command, for example, when I place it into position, which I like, left click, you can use right click and select done. Okay, now no command is active. When you use right click, you see the menu looks like this. In the next step, we are going to add 3D model into our footprint. Go to DigiKey, find our header, scroll down, and uh, here you can download 3D models. Uh, I know this is a Molex part and uh, they uh, usually have 3D models on their website. So instead of downloading 3D models from Ultra Librarian or Snap EDA, I'm going to find this on the Molex website and uh, I'm going to download 3D model directly from here. So 3D viewer and cut download. Uh, we would like to download step. Let's say this one and uh, start and it's downloaded. This is the zip file, what we have just downloaded. I go inside and I'm going to copy this step file. I'm going to copy it into our project directory. Here it is. Go back to Allegro. Click on this 3D view button. Click on this 3D mapper tab. And in model file, 
we would like to select the 3D model. So left click here, select the file what we have downloaded, open. Wow! We need to correct the position. So use this button here, select it, left click, and select the surface which is going to be placed on the top of the PCB, for example this, left click. You can use this man button, manually move the header around. Uh, we would like to rotate it, so we can use this, left click. And uh, we would like to have the back of the header exactly here, because you can see here on the seal screen, this is the place where the back should be. Press shift, hold it down, press middle button on your mouse, hold it down, you can uh, move this 3D view like this. Zoom in, use mouse wheel, or press middle button, hold it down, and you can pan the view. To place these pins inside of these pads, you can use this X and Y button. So left click here. Now left click on the top of the first pin, left click on the top of the second pin, left click on the uh, first hole, so where the first pin should go, and left click on the second hole. And select this X and Y button, and perfect. Press Shift, hold it down, middle button, hold it down. You can double check the footprint. You can go to visibility, if you like, you can uncheck everything, and you can, for example, only show the seal screen top, and uh, you can have a look if the seal screen goes nicely around the header. Perfect. Our footprint is finished. Don't forget to save it. Click on File and use Save, or you can just click on this button here. We are going to create the LED footprint. Click on File, New. I'm going to call it LED 0603G as green. Select Package Symbol Wizard. Click on OK. Uh, we would like to use this SMD discrete as the starting point. It is very similar to what we need. Click on Next. Load template, left click, click on Next. We would like to use millimeters because data sheet is in millimeters. And the prefix for LED is D, is diode. Click on Next. Terminal pin spacing, go to data sheet. And uh, it is 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7, 1.4 millimeter. This E and D is 1.6, 0 0.8. So go here, put here 1.6, 0 0.8. Click on next. A pin. We would like to use the pin which we created for the LED. Left click here. Leave the star there and just put here LED, TAP, select it, OK, click on Next. Mm, origin, uh, I'm going to leave center because for SMD components, uh, you would like to have origin in the place where the pick and place machine is going to pick up these SMD components. And usually it is in the center, uh, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Click on Next and Finish. We are going to add 3D model to this footprint. Go to DigiKey, find our LED, scroll down, and uh, here is the step file for the LED. This is the 3D model. Left click. Oh, it looks like we can't really download this file directly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select everything. Control A, Control C, go into our project directory. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it let3d.stp. OK, and I'm going to paste the information about 3D model here. Save the file. Here it is. And we are going to use it in our footprint. 
go back to our footprint, left click on this 3D view button, go to 3D mapper, select model file, left click here, and select the file that we have downloaded, open. And now we would like to place this uh, 3D model correctly on our footprint. Uh, basically, this is path number one, uh, and this is the path number two. If we go back here, you can see this is the place uh, around the footprint, okay? In the 3D model, it is this place, which is here. So this is pin number one, this is pin number two. Go to datasheet. And this is pointing to the pin which is cut out. If we go into our schematic symbol library, then uh, pin number one is cut out. So uh, basically, this 3D model is rotated correctly. This is pointing to pin number one. We just need to place it on the top of the PCB and move it on the pins. Do you remember how to do it? Click on this top, select the surface which is going to be on the top of the PCB. Uh, we can use manual to move this a little bit away. I'm going to zoom out. Press shift, hold it down. Press middle mouse button, hold it down. Uh, unselect man, select X and Y. Left click on this pin number one, pin number two, path number one, path number two unselect X and Y, okay? Go to visibility, maybe uncheck this, and let's have a look if it's pointing correctly, okay? This is pin number one, so this is cut out and this, this is pointing correctly. We can close the 3D view. I'm going to hide these pin numbers again, and let's go back to our footprint. I'm not going to make any other changes in this footprint because a little bit later I would like to show you how you can uh, uh, make changes in footprint which is already used in PCB. Okay, so this is definitely not the right footprint for LED. We will improve it later. However, what I would like to point out is uh, this uh, seal screen and assembly uh, drawing layer, this uh, rectangle which is around the uh, component. And uh, when you think about this, uh, this was created automatically by the component wizard, but ideally we don't want to have seal screen going through the paths. We would like to have the seal screen and the assembly drawing layer around the paths. So in the next step, when we will be creating the uh, resistor footprint, we will make uh, this uh, outline and assembly drawing a little bit bigger. I will then tell you when we specify these dimensions. Okay, so uh, this is everything for now for this LED footprint. You can save it and we can create the last footprint what we need. To create the resistor footprint, click on File, Select New. I'm going to call it R0805. Select package symbol wizard, OK. We would like to use SMD discrete, next. Load template, next. We would like to use millimeters. And the prefix is going to be R, next. Terminal pin spacing, go to data sheet. So this is the uh, recommended footprint and the uh, spacing between the pins, middle of the pins, is C plus B. It is uh, 1.2 plus 0.9, 2.1 millimeter. On here, 2.1. And uh, this, we don't want to use the size of the component. As uh, I mentioned before, we would like to maybe use something which goes around the paths. So uh, instead of size of the resistor, I'm going to put here numbers like 3.8 and 2 millimeters. Okay, so the assembly drawing and uh, seal screen layer will not go through the paths, but will go nicely around the paths when we use these dimensions. Click on next, uh, select the pins for 
a resistor. We call it res, tap, res pin. OK. Next. We would like to keep the origin in the center. Click on next and finish. This footprint is almost perfect. Maybe what we would like to do, we would like to move this text. So first I'm going to change grid. Be sure you are in general edit here. Then right click into empty space, click utilities, grids. I'm going to change non-edge grid to 0.1 by 0.1 millimeter. Click on OK. And we would like to move this uh, text which is on assembly top layer. We would like to move it uh, inside of this uh, component. So we are going to use move command. We would like to hold the text in body center. Hover cursor over the text. Left click and place it into center, maybe like this, left click, click into empty space. Now we would like to move this text, which is on the cell screen top layer. Uh, we would like to hold it in uh, origin, left click on the text and place it maybe like here, left click, right click, done. We can have a look on the individual layers of this footprint uh, just to check if everything is OK. Left click on this color button. I'm going to switch off everything. Select stack up. Now let's have a look on the top layer. So these are the paths. I'm going to disable them. Let's have a look on the paste mask top layer. It is exactly same as the top layer, see? And the solder mask top is going to be a little bit bigger like this. Also, what we would like to see is geometry and uh, package geometry, seal screen top. Perfect. It is going to be exactly the same as the assembly top. Perfect. I can enable both. And we can go to components, reference designators, and we should be able to see reference designator on assembly top and also on the seal screen top. Everything seems to be fine. Only what is missing is the 3D model. Go to DigiKey. Find the uh, resistor. Scroll down. And we can download 3D model from Snap EDA website. Left click here. You need to register here uh, to be able to download the 3D model, but it's free. So you can just register go to 3D model and download 3D model. Here is the downloaded file and I'm going to copy it inside of our project directory. Here it is. Go back to our footprint, uh, go to 3D view, select 3D mapper, model file, left click, uh, this is the file what we have downloaded open. Uh, we would like to place it on the top. I'm going to move it a little bit. It looks like it is placed correctly, but just in case. I'm going to use this X and Y. Left click, left click, left click, left click. Unselect X and Y. Go to visibility. I'm going to disable all these layers. And I'm going to double check if, if the paths are nicely under the component. Looks good. Perfect, we can close this. Our footprint is finished. Don't forget to save it. We have created all the footprints and now we need to assign these footprints to our symbols. If you go into our schematic and when you double click, for example, on this resistor symbol, you will see that right now this PCB footprint property is empty. So we need to go inside of our library and for each symbol, we need to specify the footprint which is used with this symbol. Let's do it. Inside of our schematic symbol library, double click on the header symbol. Go into our project directory. 
and I'm going to copy the name of the footprint. Go back into our library and paste the uh, name into this PCB footprint property. Double click on the LED symbol, go back into our project directory. I'm going to copy the name of the footprint and I'm going to paste it here and double click on the resistor symbol, go back to the project directory, copy it and paste it here. Don't forget to select the library and save it. Yes to all. The components which are used in our schematic, uh, they are not used directly from our library. They are used from this design cache. So what we are going to do, uh, we are going to select a connector, LED and resistor, just press Ctrl, hold it down and left click on these symbols. And uh, we are going to update this cache from the library. So right click on these selected symbols and use update cache. Yes. Yes. Once the cache is updated, we still need to update also the symbols which are used in the schematic. So when these three symbols are selected in the cache, right click again and now use this replace cache. Select this, preserve reference designators and press OK. Go to our schematic, just double click and I'm going to check if the symbols were updated. So double click on the resistor symbol, find the PCB footprint property and here you can see now there is the proper footprint name. Perfect. Uh, when these symbols were updated, uh, you can see they don't look very nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select it and press R to rotate, R to rotate and now it looks nicer. Select the diode, R, R, R. R. It looks nicer. And let's try also this one. Okay. Perfect. I promise to show you what to do when you realize that uh, there is a mistake in the schematic symbol. For example, it says here this is a red LED, but it is actually a green LED. So there is a mistake and we need to fix it. And we are going to do it exactly the same way as what we use when we updated the information about the PCB footprint. Inside of our schematic symbol library, double click on the LED symbol. Uh, we would like to change this uh, value, so select it. I'm going to change it to green. Now, when this uh, symbol is updated, select the schematic symbol library and save it. In the design cache, right click on the LED symbol, select update cache, yes, yes. Right click on the LED symbol, select the replace cache, select this, check this, OK, yes go into our schematic and you can see the LED symbol was updated. I'm going to select it, press R to rotate, R, R, R. Now it looks nice. Okay, so this is the way how you can update the schematic symbols in case you find out the, there is something wrong and you need to adjust it. What can be very useful to know is how to annotate your schematic. And annotation is basically working with these reference designators. Okay, so first you may want to know how to reset reference designators. Right click on this project, select annotate, select this, press OK. And watch what is going to happen when I press OK here. Remember, now this is R1, D1, J1, and when I press OK, I reset the uh, reference designators. R question mark, D question mark, J question mark. Now we would like to annotate this schematic again, and we can do it automatically. Just right click here, 
select annotate, select this, OK. And again, watch what is going to happen when I press OK. We are back. Oh, this is now R1, D1, J1. This can be super useful if you have like a very big schematic and you would like to be, for example, sure uh, each component has unique uh, reference designator. So there are now, for example, two R1 resistors. We have finished our schematic and we would like to be sure there are no errors, there are no warnings. And uh, as I explained before, we are going to learn how to fix this uh, missing footprint error or missing footprint warning. Uh, you will get this warning when you try to place a symbol into your schematic. When I double click here and when I place it into schematic, escape, see now there are four warnings. And uh, to fix this, uh, what we need to do, we need to add path into our project directory uh, to the settings of this software. So I'm going to use this undo and we are going to do it. I'm going to copy the path into our project directory, control C. Now find where this capture any file is located. Usually you can find the location uh, when you start ORCAD, then here in session log, this is where the uh, capture any file is located, okay? So on my computer, it is here. I'm going to open it, find these Allegro footprints, and here we are going to add more directories. So right there, I'm going to increase the number. So previous one is one, I'm going to use two equals dot this is just local directory and i'm going to also add the project directory so dir three equals this is the project directory close this and save we have to do something similar also in this allegro software go to setup user preferences find paths library in path path, left click here, we would like to add the uh, path to our project directory, left click here, left click, this is where our project is located, just choose, okay, and also for PSM path, left click here, add dot, I'm going to move it up, and also add the project directory, left click, and simply just choose OK, OK, and we need to close this software. So I'm going to close this one and also I'm going to close this one. Start the ORCAD software again. Open our project and there should be no missing footprint uh, warning anymore. Inside of our schematic page, you can see the online DRC is empty. And when we try to place a symbol, see, no warnings or no errors anymore. Perfect. To be sure there are no other warnings or other errors, we can run DRC check. Select this project, go to PCB, use designs rule check and run. You can see there are no errors, no warnings in this DRC. Uh, online DRC is empty and in session log there is no mention of errors or warnings. So this is perfect. Okay, we are ready to start working on our PCB. And I uh, really hope I set up everything correctly because this is the moment of the truth. We will see if everything is going to work. To start a new PCB, simply click on PCB and select new layout. OK. I'm going to select this first license. You can use the license which you have and OK. I'm going to check if the components from our schematic were 
import it into this design. So click on this general edit and select placement edit. And yes, we can see the components from our schematic here. This is perfect. Uh, before we place them in, on our board, we are going to change some settings. Go to setup, design parameters, click on design, we are going to use millimeters. Size is going to be A3 and um, this I'm going to change to minus 100 and also here minus 100. So basically what we are doing, uh, we are uh, setting up the size of the canvas. So this is not size of our PCB, it is size of this black area where we can work on our PCB. And uh, this means that the origin is not going to be directly here in this uh, bottom left corner, but it's going to be moved a little bit up. Okay. We are going to draw the shape of our board. I'm going to use general edit. I'm going to place rectangle on board geometry, design outline layer, uh, shape fill unfilled. I'm going to start from zero, zero, left click here. And the size of the board is going to be 20 by 20 millimeters. And a very simple way how you can jump cursor or into specific uh, location, you can just go down here and write X, that's the special command, and now write the coordinates, 20, space, 20, enter. Okay, so now we have uh, this uh, square with the size of 20 by 20 millimeters. Right click, done. We are going to change the grid, right click into empty space, click utilities, select grids. For non-edge layer, I'm going to use 0 0.5, tap 0 0.5 millimeter. Okay. We are going to place components on our board. And uh, the simplest way how to do it is click on place, select manually, select all the components and just place them. Left click, left click, left click, right click, done. To move components, we are going to use the move command and go into this find tab. Here, switch off everything and only select symbols. So we only would like to work with components. Left click, move it maybe like here, left click. If you would like to rotate component, right click, rotate and just do it this way. If uh, this doesn't work, I'm going to do left click. If this doesn't work, go to options. And here are some settings for rotation. So uh, sometimes this may be set, for example, to absolute. You need to change it to incremental. And, he and here you can uh, set the angle. So if I set, let's say, 45, and when I use rotate, it will uh, be rotating uh, with increment of 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 90 and I'm going to place it like this. Left click, left click, right click, rotate, left click, maybe I will do it like this, this, and I will move this little bit closer. Left click, right click, done. Always, when you are doing placement, watch these uh, blue lines. They are telling you what pins need to be connected together. So, for example, when you are rotating this uh, component, you may want to rotate it the way it's going to be easy to draw the PCB layout. It's going to be easy to connect the pins together. To draw the tracks on this PCB, I'm going to use a little bit uh, more precise grid. So right click into empty space, quick utilities, grids. And for all edge layers, for all the layers with copper, I'm going to set the grid to 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 millimeter. Okay. 
also what we would like to do we would like to set some basic rules and we can do it in constraint manager left click on this constraint manager button go to physical select all layers and here we are going to set the uh, minimum track width uh, what we would like to use in our PCB let's say 0.3 millimeter so uh, select this left click here and press control on your keyboard uh, left click also here and left click also here and we would like to set all these values to 0.3 just write 0.3 enter okay what we would like to do we would like to also uh, select uh, the via which we created in path stack editor uh, that's the via which we would like to use in our pcb so left click here uh, select this uh, default via remove it in this filter write our okay this is our via which we created double click and press ok go to spacing select all layers and here we are going to set the distance between different objects on our PCB if you double click here you can see there are all the kind of uh, ways how to specify all the kind of different distances between different objects we would like to simply use 0.3 for everything so I'm going to select all these values just left click to this first one press shift hold it down left click on this last one and i'm going to change it to 0.3 enter and do exactly same for this same net spacing select all layers I'll left click into this first one press shift hold it down left click on this last value and just write 0.3 enter uh, this constraint manager is very powerful you can set here all the kind of different rules so maybe a little bit later you would like to have a look at what you can do here for now this is everything what we need i'm just going to close it and we can continue we would like to also check the stack up so left click here on this uh, x section button and uh, currently we are using two layer pcb and maybe what we would like to adjust is the thickness of the dielectricum for standard two layer pcb this is 1.6 millimeter enter okay finally we can draw some tracks on our pcb and uh, it's super simple just use this uh, add connect button left click left click on a pin and just draw the track left click left click left click right click done if you would like to adjust this existing track you can use this slide button left click left click here and just make it nicer let's say like this and right click done if in your allegro something is working differently as what you can see in this video then don't forget to check three things if you select a command then every command uh, has different options so when i'm doing something have a look if in your options there are no different settings also double check this find tab if uh, you can if you would like to move for example a component then uh, you need to have the components or symbols enabled in this find panel so here basically you are saying we uh, you are selecting the components what you would like to work with and they have to be checked otherwise you can't work with these uh, objects and the third thing which is super important to check is this edit mode so for example if uh, you are using different edit mode as what i'm using in the video your allegro is going to behave differently let's say i'm going to select this edge edit mode and notice that right now i don't have to select any commands i can directly uh, draw the tracks i can simply just left click on a path and draw a track i can cancel this i can simply just hover cursor over a track and move it i don't have to select these commands because i'm in edge edit mode 
And very similar if you use, for example, place main mode, you can guess. You don't need to use any commands, you can just hover cursor over a component, left click and you can just move it, okay? Uh, by the way, if you would like to delete something, you can just use this button which is here, okay? So uh, use this delete command, select what you would like to delete, right click, done. I'm going back into this general edit mode and we can continue. But don't forget, if something is not working, check the options, check the find and check the edit mode which you are using. Next, very quickly, I would like to give you an example how to work with this find tab and also how to work with the objects which are already in your PCB. So let's say we would like to change the width of this track. Go to find, switch off everything. Now you can work with client segments only, I'm going to check it. And then you would need to go and select every single segment of this track, press Ctrl, hold it down and left click. Or what you can do, you can use these clients instead of these client segments. And then when you hover cursor over this track, all the whole track is selected, you can just use left click. And then because we are in general edit mode, we can use right click and you will see all the kind of commands what you can do with this selected object. So for example, here you can see we can change the width of the track, left click and let's say we would like to have it 0 0.5 and press OK. Left click into empty space to unselect everything. Okay, so this is very simple way to explain how to use this find and also how to use right click to do some commands with the objects which you already have in your PCB. So let's continue. Uh, I'm going to use edge edit mode. We would like to work with everything and we would like to draw the track here which is 0.5 millimeter wide. We would like to connect it here. Left click, left click, right click, and we would like to add a via. Right click, done. I'm going to change the edge grid. Right click into empty space, quick utilities grids. I would like to use 0.5 by 0.5 millimeter. Okay. And now we would like to uh, connect this VR to ground plane which we will place on the bottom layer of our PCB. So we are going to draw a big ground plane on the bottom. Use this rectangle command. We would like to place it on the bottom. Be sure the fill is dynamic copper. And here select that we would like to connect this plane to ground net. Okay. Now simply just left click somewhere here and left click, right click, done. Very often when you are designing boards, you may find out that you need to make some changes in existing schematic and then you need to transfer these changes to existing PCB and that's what we are going to learn now. Go to our schematic, I'm going to copy this Ctrl C, Ctrl V. I'm going to place it maybe here. Zoom in. I'm going to use place, wire command, and I'm going to connect it. Left click, left click, left click, left click, right click, and wire. Double click on this net name, and we would like to call it diode 2. Okay. And these are the changes what we would like to import into our PCB. Select our project, save it, go to PCB, select update layout. Here you will see a list of the changes what is going to happen and click on sync. Go to Allegro, click on place, select manually, select all the new components and we would like to place the diode on the bottom side of our PCB. So right click, select mirror, and right click, rotate. 
left click, left click, right click, mirror. Mirror will place the component on the bottom side of the PCB and right click, rotate, we need to rotate it like this. Left click, left click, right click, done. I'm going to adjust the shape of the ground plane, use this uh, shape select command, left click, left click on the ground plane, hover cursor over the edge of the ground plane, press left button, hold it down, move it, right click, done. When in edge edit mode, go to find, uh, be sure everything is on, so left click here, zoom in, use mouse wheel, left click, uh, we would like to make this track wider, go to options, select line width 0 0.5, left click, left click, left, 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 left click, left, I'm going to move this, just hover cursor, press left button, hold it down, and move it. Left click, left click, perfect. Now, do you remember when we were creating this LED footprint? I told you this is not a proper footprint. And now is the time to fix this footprint. Okay, so let's say during PCB layout, you found out that one of your footprint is wrong and you need to make some changes in this footprint. And that's what we are going to learn now. Go to File, Recent Designs, find the footprint for our LED, here it is, left click. Yes, we would like to uh, save our PCB and uh, let's fix this. First, we are going to fix this paste layer in the LED path. Uh, basically, when we were creating this path, we intentionally made this uh, paste layer smaller so we can learn how to update path in a footprint in case there is something wrong. Here you can see this is the mask layer, which is a little bit bigger then the path, this is the path, and this is the uh, solder layer, which uh, should be exactly same size as the path is, and it is not. So we need to fix it. Go to Path Tag Editor, click on File, select the Recent Paths, and open LED pin, left click. Go to Design Layers, and check what is the size of the path, 0 0.7 by 0 0.7 millimeter. Go to mask layers, left click on the paste mask, and we are going to correct the width, it is going to be 0 0.7, and 0 0.7 is also the height. So this is the right size for the opening in the paste mask layer for this pin. Don't forget to save it, so click on file, save. Go back to our footprint, then click on Tools, select Path Stack, and here you can use Replace in case uh, you are going to completely use different pin or different path, or in our case we just can use this Refresh. So watch what is going to happen, okay? The size of this uh, paste layer uh, should be same as the path size, so basically it will disappear. I'm going to select this and Refresh. Refresh, close, and it is fixed. I have just updated my Cadence software to the latest version, so it looks a little bit differently as what I had uh, like 10 seconds ago, but uh, it is still very similar, it is basically the same, so if you are using different uh, version of this software, don't worry, you still will be able to follow the tutorial. So let's continue. I'm going to change grid, right click into empty space, quick utilities, grids, and I'm going to use 0 0.1 everywhere. So 0 0.1 tap 0 0.1, and also for all edge 0 0.1 tap 0 0.1. Okay. I'm going to delete these uh, lines on top seal screen layer and on top assembly drawing layer. 
So use the delete command, go to find, switch off everything, enable lines, hover cursor over this line on assembly top, left click, left click into empty space, hover cursor over the line on the seal screen top, left click to select it, and left click into empty space to delete it. Right click, done. We are going to draw the rectangles again, but a little bit bigger. So use this uh, shape add rectangle command, left click, go to options. We would like to draw on package geometry, seal screen top layer. Uh, we would like to use unfilled uh, rectangle. Now left click here and uh, maybe one, two, three, four, left click. I would like to mark where cathode is located, so we are going to place one more rectangle. This time we would like to use static solid, so it's going to be filled. And left click, left click, right click, done. I marked uh, this side of the footprint because this is where pin 1 is located and when we have a look into our schematic symbol and when we enable these pin numbers, you can see the cathode is where pin 1 is located, okay? So that's the reason why we made this marking where pin 1 is. We need exactly same shape also on the assembly top layer, so I'm going to use this copy command, left click here, go to find, switch off everything, we would like to work with shapes, select them, in options, we would like to use this user pick. So left click here and left click, right click, done. We would like to move this on assembly top layer. So select it, right click, change to assembly top, left click into empty space. And I'm going to use move command. I'm going to select this and we are going to move it up here. Left click, right click done. What we are going to do next, it is not really necessary, but let's make this footprint properly. So we are going to make these shapes, which are on boundary layers, we are going to make them uh, same size as this outline. So let's do it. I'm going to use this color button, left click here, switch off all the layers, go to geometry, package geometry, Enable DFA boundary top and seal screen top. OK. Go to shape edit and just hover cursor over this corner. Move it. Hover cursor here. Press left button, hold it down and move it. Go to color button. Geometry, package geometry. Uncheck this and uh, Place boundary top layer, enable this, click on OK, and do exactly the same. Just move this, and also move this. Go to visibility, uh, enable all the layers, and go back to general edit mode. I'm going to make this text on assembly top layer a little bit smaller. Just hover cursor over the text, right click, change text block to number two and left click into empty space to unselect it. We would like to use move command in options, use uh, body center, left click and move it maybe like this, left click, right click, done. And uh, we can move also this, so I'm going to use move command again. I'm going to use symbol origin and we can move this left click, left click, right click, done. I'm going to open 3D view, just double check if everything is okay. Press shift, hold it down, press middle button on your mouse, hold it down and okay. These paths are correctly placed on the footprint. Uh, this is the marking of the cathode and on the 3D model this is supposed to point to the path with cathode. Everything seems to be fine. 
I'm going to close this and don't forget to save your footprint. Go back to our board, click on File, Recent Designs, this is our board. And uh, we are going to update the footprint, so watch what is going to happen with this diode footprint. Click on Place, Update Symbols. We would like to update all footprints. You can update only the LED, but I'm going to update all of them. And uh, I'm going to also reset symbol, text, location, and size. Check this. Refresh. Watch. Perfect. Close. And uh, the footprint of our LED was updated. We are going to make the seal screen layer and assembly drawing layer a little bit nicer. Basically, we are going to move these reference designators a little bit. So, go to Colors. Uh, we are going to switch off some layers so we can see the text a little bit nicer. Disable top and bottom layer. And in Geometry, Package Geometry, we would like to maybe hide the boundary layers. This one this one, and also here, this one, this one, okay, now use the move command, in uh, find, switch off everything, we would like to work with text, left click on this text, right click, rotate, left click, left click, left click, right click, rotate, and uh, left click, left, left, right, rotate, left, 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 right, rotate, left, left, right click, done. And uh, we would like to also rotate the reference designators on the assembly drawing layer. Uh, be sure you are in this general edit mode, uh, be sure no command is active, and uh, then in find, switch off everything, we would like to work with text, and then when you hover cursor over a uh, footprint, then you will see the text on the assembly drawing layer. And you can see uh, this one uh, has the letter D on the bottom, and this one has the letter R on the top, and we would like to have it same way. So just use right click, and spin. Uh, right now it is spinning uh, the way which is not what I would like to have, so go to options and we would like to spin uh, around body center. Select this. Okay, now this is what I would like to have. So R is on the bottom, D is on the bottom, D is on the bottom, and here R is on the top, so we would like to rotate this, right click, spin, left click, left click into empty space to unselect everything. We are going to add some text on the uh, seal screen top layer, so we use this uh, add text button, left click, here select board geometry and uh, seal screen top. We would like to use uh, text size 3, just use this arrow or you can write the number here, and left click right plus, left click, right minus, and left click, right PDL Academy, or you can use your company name. Right click, done. We would like to use move command, so left click, we would like to work with text, left click, I'm going to move it, maybe I would like to hold it in uh, body center, so I'm going to move it here, and I'm going to move this here, and I would like to hold this in symbol origin, and place it here, left click, right click, done. And uh, your PCB is finished, well done! If you would like to see 3D model of your board, you can just click on this button, then you can say, wow! If you would like to change colors, go to Setup, Preferences, let's select blue, okay, 
Uh, if you would like to play with the individual layers, you can do it here. Or if you need to update 3D models of the components, or if you need to add some 3D models into your board, then you can do it here. Okay? Perfect. Next, we are going to create views, which you can find very useful when you will be doing PCB layout. But uh, you can also use these views to generate uh, documents for PCB manufacturing. And this is how you can create views. Click on this color button, switch off all the layers, enable top layer, go to view, color view save, and we are going to call it top layer. Save it. Now go back to the colors. I'm going to disable this, enable bottom, call this bottom layer, save it. Go back to colors, disable bottom. We would like to create a view for, for seal screen top layer. So in geometry, select board geometry, enable seal screen top. In package geometry, enable seal screen top. And also in components, reference designator, enable seal screen top. I'm going to call this view seal top. Save it. Do exactly the same for the bottom seal screen. So disable this, enable, disable, enable, disable, enable, call it silk bottom. And a few more very simple layers. Switch off everything, go back to stack up, enable solder mask top. I'm going to call it solder top. Now, disable, enable, I'm going to call this solder bottom. Do exactly the same for the paste layers. Paste top. Paste bottom. And I'm going to create one more view. Disable everything, and in geometry, board geometry, enable design outline. This is the uh, board outline, so I'm going to call it board. Save. We can close this. And uh, if you like, you can also close this. I don't need to save it. If you go into visibility, uh, here in this view, you can select the views which we just created. So very quickly, if you would like to see, let's say, seal screen top layer, just select it. Okay? So this is seal screen top. If you would like to see seal screen bottom, this is seal screen bottom. By the way, if you would like to see how your board looks uh, from the bottom view, you can go to view and use this flip design. Okay? So now you can very nicely read all the text on the bottom uh, side of your board. View, go back. If you need to see all the layers, simply just click on On. Before we start generating documents for PCB manufacturing, we would like to be sure there are no errors on our PCB. And uh, to check if there are any errors, you can simply just right click here and select this display status. Uh, everything should be green, okay? Uh, sometimes uh, this may be red, uh, you can just uh, use this button, update all. Sometimes this can be red, you can just manually update DRC, left click here, and perfect. Everything is green, there are no errors, press OK. When uh, you are running design rule check, you need to be sure that the rules what you are using, they are actually checked. If you go into this constraint manager, then uh, analyze, analysis mode. Here you can see a list of all the rules and you can see if they are going to be checked or not. For example, if I click on this spacing, you can see uh, almost everything is on. So almost all these rules are going to be checked. But if I uh, select seal screen, you can see everything is off. So right now when I run designs rule check, 
uh, basically no seal screen errors are going to be found because they are not checked. Okay, so when you will be using design's rule check, you need to go through this and be sure uh, you enable everything, all the rules which you are using in your design. In case there is an error, this is how it is going to look. First, I'm going to save this. And let's say we are going to route this track very close to this path. And you can see there will be error because the cursor shape is different. Left click, right click, done. So this means there is an error. If you go down here, display status, you see there is shorting error. And you can also left click here and it will tell you where exactly it is located. Uh, you can also use these tools, DRC browser, to find all the errors which are on your board. You can simply double click here and here it is. Okay, so this is a very simple way to find out what kind of errors you have on your board in case you need it. I'm going to load our project again and let's continue. We are ready to generate the outputs for manufacturing and the first files what we are going to generate are called Gerber files and this is how you generate them. Go to Manufacture, select Artwork, and here we are going to specify all the layers and all the combinations of layers which we need to generate the uh, files which are needed to manufacture your PCB. Uh, for this we are going to use the views which we already created. So uh, to create the uh, output or Gerber file for top layer, we need to select this top layer view and this is what they need to manufacture the uh, top layer of your PCB. Okay, we can simply add this uh, into our list, just use right click, select add and call it top L. Okay, if you go inside you will see here are all the layers which are enabled here. And uh, same way we can uh, add all the other layers. But first I'm going to remove these uh, default layers, just use right click and cut, right click, cut. I'm going to select the bottom view, right click, add, call it bot layer. The next one is going to be seal screen top, right click, add, Silk top, then seal screen bottom, right click, add seal bottom. Next one is going to be solder top, right click, add solder top. I'm going to copy this. Okay, solder bottom right click, add, control V, B, and uh, paste top, right click, add, control C, ok, paste bottom, almost done. Okay, and also we would like to add here the board outline layer. Right click, add board. There are two more outputs which we would like to add here. Uh, these are assembly drawing outputs and we will not generate Gerber files from these outputs, but we will print them to PDF. Click on this color button. Inside Geometry, Package Geometry, Enable Assembly Top, in Components, Reference Designator, Enable Assembly Top. Now right click Add, I'm going to call it Assembly Top, OK. Go back to Colors and Disable Assembly Top, Enable Assembly Bottom, select Package Geometry, Disable Top, Enable Bottom and right click add 
call it assembly button. Okay, if you like, uh, go inside and double check if there are all the layers. I would like to save all this work. Basically, when you press cancel, you will lose all these uh, changes, what we made here. So I'm going to use OK. This will save it and I'm going to open it again. There are a couple of settings which we would like to adjust here. And the very important uh, one is this undefined line width. We would like to set it to 0.1 millimeter for all outputs. So select the first output and I'm going to put here 0.1. I'm going to copy it, Ctrl C, select the next one and put here 0.1. Uh, basically, uh, what we are doing, maybe you noticed in uh, your board, there are a number of lines with uh, a zero line width. Uh, they are very thin. And if you would like to print them, they would not be visible. Okay, so here we are setting up that if there are some lines with uh, zero width, then uh, 0 0.1 millimeter will be used instead. And then we will see them in the outputs. Okay, so that's what we are doing now. And the last one, perfect. Next, I'm going to select this assembly drawing top layer and I'm going to set this priority to one. And for the assembly drawing bottom layer, I'm going to set this to. This can be useful when you are printing these assembly drawings into PDF, then you specify on what pages you would like to have them. So they are in correct order. First, on the first page, there would be top layer and on the second page, the bottom layer. Also, for assembly drawing on bottom layer, we would like to have it mirrored. So don't forget to check this. Go to general parameters and I'm going to leave everything as it is. I'm going to leave it default. We are ready for a very important moment. We are going to generate the Gerber files. Go to film control, select all, uncheck the assembly drawings and create artwork. Scroll down and you can see uh, there are some warnings on seal screen top layer. If you go up, then uh, you will notice they are not really important. Uh, these are basically just messages about replacing the lines with zero width, uh, replacing them with 0 0.1 millimeter width. Uh, perfect. Uh, now let's have a look on the Gerber's what we have just generated. To check the files, I'm going to use software which is called ViewMate. And uh, this software is completely free. If you like, you can download it and you can install it. Once you start the software, this is how it looks. Go to File, Import Gerber go to our project directory. I'm going to copy the path to our project, Control c By the way, these are the Gerber files, what we have generated, the files with art extension. Go back here, Control v Enter. I'm going to order these files. I'm going to select the first one, left click, and then the last one. Press Shift, hold it down, left click. Press Control, hold it down, and select this, Import. And these are the Gerber files. I'm going to switch off everything. I'm going to enable the board outline, double click here. And uh, let's have a look on top layer, just double click. Uh, double click to disable it. Solder top, seal screen top, paste top. You can also combine the layers like this, okay? I'm going to disable this and let's have a look on the bottom layer. Paste bottom, seal screen bottom, and solder bottom. Perfect. The next file, what we would like to generate is called NC drill file. Go back to our project, manufacture NC, NC drill. And this is important. Uh, check this, auto to select, go to parameters, check also this, and also I'm going to use these English units. OK, and left click on drill. 
to check this file, go back to our Gerber viewer, select the empty layer, then File, Import, Drill, and this is the file what we have just generated, select it, Import. I'm going to uh, enable the board outline layer, use the mouse wheel to zoom out, and as you can see, the drilling is in the right position and also it has the right size. Perfect. If you would like to print, for example, assembly drawings, you can go back to our project and use File, Export to PDF. We would like to export assembly bottom and top. I'm going to leave everything else default. I'm going to leave this default page setup. I'm going to use millimeters and A4, scale, let's say 5, width is going to be 2, and height 2, and I'm going to change this prefix. I'm going to put there let project. Click on export go to our project directory, open the PDF, what we have just generated, and this is how it looks. Okay, on the first page there is the assembly top layer, and on the second page there is assembly bottom layer. In case you just need simply print something from Allegro, you can do it this way. Go back, I'm going to close this. I'm going to enable top layer and let's say we would like to print this because we would like to manufacture this PCB at home and we need this top layer. So go to file, select plot setup. I'm going to use scaling one and I'm going to use black and white. Okay, click on file, plot, oh, basically plot is print. So left click here. Here you can select where you would like to print. I'm going to use PDF, OK. I'm going to call it top layer, save. Go to our project directory and open the PDF, what we have just created. OK, super simple. So this is what you would use if you would like to manufacture this PCB at home. Go back to Allegro and the next file what you will need to build this board is called pick and place. Go to file, export, select placement. Simply click on this export button. I'm going to close this, go to our project directory and I'm going to open this file which we just generated. Inside of this file you can see there is a location of all the components which are on our board. And you can see there is also rotation and uh, the side if they are on top or bottom layer. Next, we would like to print our schematic, go to our cut. And uh, in case you need to change some settings for printing, you can go to options, extended preferences, schematic, and you can choose here the theme for printing. I'm going to use this light. And also uh, what you may want to do, go to Options, Preferences, and you may want to uncheck the grid because you don't want to see the grid uh, in the printed schematic. It can be really disturbing. Then uh, select the project, go to File, Print Setup. I'm going to print into PDF, so this is OK. Go to File and select Print. Just press OK. I'm going to save it into our project directory. I'm going to call it schematic, save, go to our project. Uh, I'm going one uh, directory up because we are inside of the Allegro. Here is the schematic. I'm going to open it and here it is. The last file what we would like to generate is BOM, Bill of Materials. Go back to our schematic and in the BOM we would like to use this uh, dot manufacture parameter which we included in every symbol which we created. So uh, go back to our schematic. Now select our project, go to Tools, 
use bill of materials and here we are going to add the uh, parameter so I'm going to copy this control C control V and I'm, I'm going to write here dot manufacture PN okay so this will when we will be creating table with bomb this will add the manufacture PN into this table here I'm going to name the column uh, for the manufacture part number I'm going to call it manufacture space PN we would like to open it in Excel so check this and press OK here it is so I'm going to make it a little bit wider so you can see it better so this is our bomb bill of materials you can see we are using three types of components and here is the column with the manufacturer part number which we included in our symbols perfect and uh, our project is done in case you would like to download the finished project you can just go and search for Federal GitHub click here go to YouTube Cadence Quick Tutorial or you can go directly to this URL this is the whole project you can simply download it just left click here and download if you would like to learn more about electronics we have a number of online courses just search for Federal Academy click here and I have created number of basic and also very advanced courses you can find them all listed here or you can go to our marketplace and you can find there also courses from different people courses about keycap, EMC, measurements I really hope you found this tutorial useful I would like to thank you very much for watching and see you next time bye